Hey, what's up guys? It's Arlie and I'm here with another video and today is a commentary video and I want to talk about Courage leaving Twitch to go to YouTube Gaming. Now, not by any means is YouTube Gaming a viable platform against Twitch. I mean, even though they kind of have the better half of the market share and Facebook Gaming is behind and Mixer's behind. Mixer's even more behind after they got Ninja. But the crazy part is that JD signed an exclusivity deal to YouTube Gaming. This means that more companies are opening themselves up to actually take the competition from Twitch. Twitch has found themselves in a bad spot due to not actually enforcing their uh, own policies accordingly maybe even with favoritism and YouTube does the same thing but with Mixer and YouTube on the plate it means that more companies may open themselves up we can see Facebook gaming actually open themselves up or caffeine or even DLive decide hey maybe we should buy talent maybe we should give these creators a check so we can have them over and on our platform and as we get more organic reach and more uh, people on our platform we can build out the tools. Now YouTube has been having this, you know, the most market share besides Twitch in a live streaming game for the past couple of years, but YouTube has done absolutely nothing to make their live streaming platform viable. I streamed for YouTube gaming for probably about, uh, I wanna say hard for about two months. And I was pretty, I wasn't big, but I was getting donations. I was getting new viewers. I had a good amount of my viewers find me through YouTube Gaming. So I won't say that YouTube Gaming is bad. It's actually okay. But compared to Twitch, once I transitioned to Twitch, which I didn't get paid or anything. I wasn't big enough. I didn't, and I, I mean, I will say this. Twitch is better. Twitch is better. Um, of course, I got more audience over on YouTube. So it would have been nicer to stay there, at least for the extra revenue. But Twitch just gave creators ads and all types of stuff. So I moved to Twitch. Would I move to YouTube Gaming if I was on Twitch? I would say, I don't know. It depends on the, how much they paid Courage. But the fact that companies are doing this means that Dr. Disrespect and a bunch of other uh, gamers or upcoming streamers or streamers who are already major can definitely have some leg room to move to the next spot. I'm excited. I'm excited for what's to come because it's like, you know, usually streamers were like independent contractors. Like we get on, we stream, we have to we were we have to make our own money. But now, dude, I mean we have options. We're like we're like artists. We're like I can't explain it, but we can sign deals now to, to move to other places things like that. Like we're an actor. Oh, we can we can move over to Mixer because of this or we can move over to uh we can move over to youtube because of this and then maybe facebook would be like huh maybe i should try that and facebook's like oh i'll pay this streamer three grand just to come stream over here exclusively you know it's just stuff like that and uh i'll tell you right now if i get a deal for anything i'm moving i'm moving over now of course i wouldn't quit youtube because when it comes to like pre-recorded video i can still put my streams over there but man, this is this is huge leverage. I wonder what Twitch is gonna do about this. They've been losing names left and right. They lost Shroud, they lost Ninja, they just lost Courage, and I wonder who's next. Just like Tifu said in a tweet, this is crazy, man. The fact that they've lost that many names in such a short time span worries me. Now, the thing about YouTube gaming you're gonna ask me what I loved about it I love that the chat is better to me the chat is better some people just disagree but I like that you have more tools in terms of what you can do with the chat and I like that with the, the tiers you can kind of change the prices where it's like on Twitch I don't believe you can change the price for your subscription so I do like that aspect of YouTube gaming also searchability so on youtube gaming how i grew on youtube gaming may be different for other streamers searchability so 
I had a pretty big channel. I think at the time when I started streaming for YouTube Gaming, I was getting little to no viewers, and I had a base of a lot of like content. Like I, dude, when I tell you, I had twenty six thousand subscribers, but I wasn't getting any stream people in my streams. It's because of searchability. So I started tagging my streams before I would upload or before I would start streaming. I would put the right tags and title maybe a thumbnail and voila now I've got 5,000 people in my stream so that's the good thing about YouTube is that with YouTube gaming you can actually use search terms to actually grow versus on Twitch I feel like discoverability is next to none you just have to like post on other social media platforms to actually grow on Twitch and I think that's the case with Mixer I believe that's the case with well no with Facebook I think you can just buy Facebook ads or Facebook boost posts and that will help you which I guess Facebook's pay to win in a way unless you're already popular somewhere else so that's the thing with Twitch you know like if you upload somewhere else it's different um, you have to grow by getting people from somewhere else I feel like on Twitch in my opinion nowadays but on YouTube that discoverability is still there even if you're not making money, the discoverability and the exposure helps you start and learn how to monetize along the way. Because like, uh, I think I was watching Optimus, he was talking about this too. If you just work on your audience first, you will get the money. Don't worry about it. Worry about the money later. Just build your audience first. Um, so you got to be going harder than every day. But YouTube Gaming is a viable platform for search. If you want to get discovered, you as a streamer, you will get found on YouTube Gaming. Where you become big, I don't know. But uh, definitely, this is a huge move. Uh, Twitch, like I said, has no discoverability. I heard they're trying to fix that because they acquired like the IMBD of uh, video games, where they have a directory of games and like people search based on that. So that will help. Maybe they need to add a recommendation algorithm like uh, YouTube has, like up next. So you can, like, based on the streamer you're watching, you can watch the next streamer. Um, that would be cool. And uh, maybe you can get some views too, just because, you know, this streamer is streaming something similar to yours. I just think as these companies start to build out these tools, things are going to get a lot more shakier. Um, and there's going to be more competition, which ultimately benefits us as content creators. If you are an aspiring content creator or a content creator that's just getting started or an established content creator, this works out for all of us because we've been dealing with crap, not only with Twitch and the way they do their policies and just the platform in general and how it's going downhill. YouTube has been going downhill too in terms of their policies and things they want you to do now so uh, all I got to say is all this open competition is actually good for everybody in the content creation space so if you're a streamer or a content creator you stream man it, the next five to six years is going to be interesting and the people who are putting in the work I'm talking maybe you're streaming six hours a day minimum minimum and you work a nine to five job you know and you're just going hard you're going at it you're not gonna stop i mean life is about to get real crazy um i also want to mention those who create the videos on top of that a lot of people don't know ninja he worked a job and went to school and streamed hours on end every single day he didn't stop he was so consistent even when views go down that's gonna make or break some creators it's when their viewership goes down and that's what I'm about to get into also watch time so what is the incentive for you to sign a contract an exclusivity deal because with ninja signing that deal a lot of people saw it as stupid but the biggest thing with content creators like streamers and uh, gamers or whatever is that you never know when your income is going to go away. You truly never know when your views or your base is just going to go away. It could go away in a day or you could have a significant drop by tomorrow. And I think that what these streamers are doing is that they are taking these options so they can be able to do it even more and 
even if something bad happens, like, okay, I move to Mexico, or I lose all my viewership, I, I think the amount of money they paid me is more than enough. And if I have to build my fan base back up, this amount of money gives me that opportunity to redo that if this platform becomes viable. And that's the incentive with moving platforms and streaming exclusively somewhere else. Because the worst can happen is that you walk away with a $10 million check, a 50 grand check, and you can still keep content creating because now your income isn't completely like uh, predicated upon, oh, did I stream today? And that's the biggest fear for content creators, even myself. When I get up in the morning, I think about, wow, if I don't upload today, I may lose all my audience, which sounds insane, but it's very possible because the algorithm wants you to feed it every single day. Like, it wants you to be part of it every single day. And that's how people grow. That's how I've been growing on this channel. I haven't really had a lot of big hit masterpiece videos, but I've had consistency and trying and experimenting and playing around and that alone has helped me grow um, and I'm just not taking YouTube seriously and it's like you gotta constantly produce content you gotta keep going and all, on all platforms and like I said these deals just open the door for people to do that more because that's the hardest thing when in this game live streaming making content on the internet is it, is it profitable but a lot of people don't have the room to get to that point to make it profitable they may have to work three jobs like i did to start off just to get the equipment just to get going and that doesn't mean you're going to make money i didn't make money for the first two years i'm just now seeing a return so it's it's one of those things where it, it's a hard long-term grind but the, the benefits you reap are insane from it. anyways thank you so much for watching and peace.